Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes, tonight's special guest, Bert Gordon, the mad Russian of radio, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello, <laughs> here it is, the last program of 1943, and you're late again. Now, now, where have you been? Oh, Abbott, the worst thing just happened to me. No. Yeah, Mrs. Niles gave me a dog for Christmas present, and the dog just took a great big bite out of me. Where did he bite you? Well, if I'd have been wearing a license plate, he'd have got the last three numbers. <laughs> where, where, where did this happen? Well, let me see now. Where did this happen? In a crowded streetcar. It's the first time I ever gave my seat to a dog. <laughs> Uh, no, never mind that. What kind of a dog uh, did Mrs. Niles give you? Well, do you remember that famous dog, Strongheart? Yes, I remember Strongheart. Well, this was his brother, weak stomach. <laughs> Listen, I'm not talking about that. Well, what is the dog's breed? What is his breed? Yes. He breeds to his nose, like you and me. <laughs> no, 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 you dummy. What type of a dog is he? A spitz? No, but he drools a little. <laughs> Look, there are different types of dogs, such as uh, setters and pointers. That's it, Abbott. That's what he is. He's a setter pointer. A setter pointer? Yeah, he sets all day and points at the icebox. <laughs> hey, that's the dog now, Abbott. He's out in the hall. Come on, Rover. Come on, Rover. Come on in the door. I said come in the door, not through the door. Why, Costello. Lou, this is a wonderful dog. Yeah. Listen to him. Just my luck to get a dog with asthma. Now, cut that out. I'm going to show you how to handle dogs. Come here, over. Tell me, how much is uh, one and one? Did you hear that, Costello? I, I didn't uh, miss it. I was here. I'll try again. Rover, how much is uh, two and two? I told you he was a smart dog. I'm going to see if he's really smart, Abbott. Rover, what time is it? Quarter to four. <laughs> Costello, isn't that the most wonderful thing you ever heard of? A talking dog. A talking dog. Wait till I get the phone. Hello? Yes? What? Oh, you don't think so, eh? <laughs> okay, Smarty, goodbye. How do you like that, Abbott? That was a friend of mine. He doesn't think there's anything wonderful about a talking dog. Who's your friend? Oh, just a horse. <laughs> Come in and make it funny. It's costing camels a lot of money. <laughs> oh, it's Ken Niles. Well, if it isn't the spirit of 76 pounds. <laughs> oh, yeah? Look who's talking. Listen, fat boy, why don't you unbutton your vest and open up a second front? <laughs> Very funny, Skinny. Very funny. Now, Costello, Ken Niles is not skinny. He's not skinny, eh? He once worked in an olive factory. He used to crawl through the olive and pull the pimento in after him. <laughs> but pay no attention to Costello, Ken. I I'm ashamed of him. He doesn't even appreciate the wonderful dog your wife gave him for Christmas. Yeah, and what's more, he didn't even thank her for it. Oh, yes, I did. I even kissed your wife on top of her head. Why didn't you kiss her on the lips? Her head is much smoother. <laughs> oh, I heard that remark, Costello. Why, I ought to give you a thrashing, you little shrimp. Me? A shrimp? Yes, you're a shrimp. You only come up to my chin. Which one? <laughs> I look old. Well, uh, don't look now, but your social security slip is showing. <laughs> Costello, how can you talk like that to Mrs. Niles after the nice present she gave you for Christmas? When you gave her nothing. Oh, I don't know why you say nothing. Didn't I give her a picture, get her picture published in the paper? Yes, but look where they put it. In the racing news. <laughs> well, ain't that the dope sheet? <laughs> oh, just look at this picture. Read what it says under it. Oh, I don't think that. Oh, look what it says. This nag showed great promise as a three-year-old, but is now running in cheap company. 
Costello, that's an insult. It most certainly is, and I'm leaving. Then take the dog Rover with you. Every time he looks at me, he bites me. Oh, that's silly. Rover hasn't got a tooth in his mouth. I know that. They're all on my leg. <laughs> you can't talk that way about Rover. Why, I love that little dog almost as much as I do Kenneth. Even more. You gave him a longer leash. <laughs> Come on, Rover, I'm taking you home. And don't even look at Mr. Costello. You're trying to choke poor Rover. You'll regret this. I'll drag you through every court in the land. I'll even take you to the Supreme Court. And I'll stand before the judge and tell him my story. And when the judge looks into my face, what do you think he'll say? <laughs> into a Japanese-held inlet right under enemy guns slides an American PT boat. Out again on her daily routine hunt for Jap supply barges. They've got what it takes, these men of the plywood Navy, and so has their cigarettes, camels, first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. Both at home and overseas, more people want camel cigarettes. But remember, if your store's temporarily sold out, camels are worth asking for again. They've always got more flavor, the result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. And wherever you are, wherever you send camels, they stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Camel's tobacco standard is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. C-A-M-E-L-S Camel cigarettes, they stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Freddie Rich and the orchestra play an unusual arrangement of David Rose's lovely composition, Holiday for Strings. for your rest for choking that dog. Yeah, but I'm telling you before now, I didn't choke the dog. He bit me! I know that, but you'll need a lawyer. Now, we've got to find a good barrister. A what? Don't you know what a barrister is? Oh, yeah. I used to slide down a barrister when I was a kid. Now, now don't be silly. A barrister is a legal expert. Uh, the greatest barrister of all times was uh, Gladstone. I suppose you never heard of Gladstone? Oh, certainly I heard of Gladstone. My uncle had Gladstones, but he had to have them cut out. Oh, <laughs> How can you talk nonsense when you may have to face the... Listen, will you listen to me, please? Yeah. How can you talk all this nonsense when you may have to face a lawsuit for thousands of dollars? And where do you expect to get the money? What do you say? Where do you expect to get the money? You know where I expect to get the money. What do you mean? You're going to help me out. How can I help you? I'm a pauper. A pauper? Congratulations. What is it, a boy or a girl? (laughs) 
Never mind that. I'd still like to know where you're going to get the money. Now, Abbott, you know I got the money coming. Now, this is the end of the year. No more after this. What do you mean? You know, 365 days in a year. Well, I know that. I'm working for you, and you owe me a whole year's salary. Wait 365 days for 365 dollars. Wait a minute. You wait a owe minute. me a dollar a day or something like that. Just a minute. Let's straighten this out. Pay you... me out. Pay Just me. a minute. Come you on, say you worked 365 days for me, and you want to be reimbursed. Look, I don't want to burst anything. <laughs> Just give me my money, 365 bucks. I'll get out. Hand over some of those Morgan Thaw mash notes. All right, look. <laughs> Now, don't get excited. Take it easy. Now, listen. How many hours a day did you work? Eight hours a day. And how many hours are there in a day? Look, now, Abbott, don't try to put anything over on me. There's 24 hours in a day, all but February, which has 28. <laughs> You're absolutely right. There are 24 hours in a day. Uh, but by working eight hours a day, you really only work one-third of each day. Is that right? Well, uh, that's according to the way you figure it. Well, one-third of 365 is about uh, $121. So you actually only have $121 coming to you. That's the way I reckon it. You sure are reckon it. <laughs> Come on, get it up. Give me the dough. Well, you did have $121 coming to you, but... I knew there was a button. It... But you didn't work Sundays, did you? No. I had to take a day off to wash my lingerie. No. Uh... <laughs> All right, there are 52 Sundays in a year. Deduct 52 from $121, which leaves $69 coming to you. You're sure of that? Positive. You see, I don't want you to cheat yourself. <laughs> now, that's mighty nice of you to look out for my interests. I might as well look out for yours. You already wrecked mine. <laughs> Come on, Abbott. Give me the money. Get up something, will you? All right, I'd be glad to give you the $69, but... Oh, hold on to your hat. Here we go again. Look, Abbott. Give me a couple of dollars. How is that? Well, you must admit you only worked a half a day on Saturdays. Isn't that right, partner? Partner. Now that I'm losing money, I'm a partner. <laughs> Look, will you give me a dollar? I'll sell... Give me a half a buck. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a second. Just a minute. Now, wait a minute. Where was I? You just had a toe hole on my $69. Oh, yes, yes. A half a day on Saturdays, uh, 52 Saturdays in a year. One half of 52 is uh, 26. So you will uh, deduct 26 from 69, leaving the sum of uh, $43. Sum of? Yes, sum of. If I get some of it, I'll be lucky. <laughs> Look, Abbott, give me a quarter. Will you let me have a quarter? Give me 20 cents. Well, now, wait a minute. I'm still... going out of here with something. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. There's still a balance of $43. But... Stop button. You're getting my goat. <laughs> But you took a two weeks vacation, didn't you? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. That's 14 days. Take 14 from $43, leaving you the exact sum of uh, $29. Look, Abbott, will you give me a dime? Is that asking too much? Will you give me, well, give me, a, give, give me anything? Listen, I'd give you the $29, but... Now I know it as good as you do. How much time did you take off for lunch? Oh, this is going to run into money. I took off one hour a day. Very well. 365 hours is equal to 15 days, I take it. You might as well take it. You've taken everything out. <laughs> Go ahead. So, 15, 15 for 29, 29 leaves 14, 14 but... but... Now I know it better than you do. Look, Abbott, give me some... Will you give me a nickel? What do you give mean? Give me four pennies. What do you mean, give me a four penny? <laughs> Look, can you spare a rat biscuit? Now, listen. <laughs> Maybe you've got a odd mothball. A mothball? Look, is it asking to... Give me a sardine. Go ahead. Mrs. Niles is going to have me in a can anyway. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let's straighten this thing out. There are 13 holidays in a year which you didn't work. And uh, as you only have $14 coming to you, we deduct the 13 from the 14, leaving you the exact sum of $1. Here you are, my dear friend, and good luck to you. Nice work, Abbott. I need money for a lawyer because Mrs. Niles is going to throw me in jail. And you're giving me only a dollar. Let's have no more words about it. One measly dollar after I worked and slaved for you for a whole year. I always pay my obligations. Here's your dollar. I wouldn't mind, Abbott. I wouldn't care if it was just for me alone. I need more than a dollar. I got another mouth to feed. Now, listen. Your troubles are not my... Uh, wait a minute. You what? I have another mouth to feed. Another mouth to feed? Yeah. You never told me that. I know it. Why, you've been with me all this time, Costello, and now you tell me you have another mouth to feed? I didn't want Winshield to hear it. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that before? I was ashamed. Oh, you fortunate fellow. That's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I, I was only kidding about the other money. Here, here's your $365. And to show you that my heart's in the right place, here's $50 of my own. <laughs> you should be so happy. What is it? A boy or a girl? A goldfish. Get out of here! 
Tommy Haynes introduces a new song destined for the top of the list. You've got to talk me into it, baby. You gotta talk me into it, talk me into it, baby. A little conversation might change my note to a maybe. You gotta spread it on thick like butter on bread. Results will be quick if you just use your head. I'm a baby lamb, and I love to be led by you. You gotta baby talk me to talk me into it, baby. For if it's Mendelssohn you hear, I might lend an ear, maybe. For I'm a cinch for a clinch, a blaze for a phrase of love words. Now that I've told you how, talk me into it now. You've got a baby talk me to talk me into it, baby. A little conversation might change my note to a maybe. You gotta spread it on thick like butter on bread. Results will be quick if you just use your head. I'm a baby lamb, and I love to be led by you. You gotta baby talk with your talk into it, baby. For if it's Mendelssohn you hear, I might lend an ear, maybe. For I'm a cinch for a clinch, a blaze for a phrase. I want you. Costello, where are you? Here I am, Emma! Uh, listen, oh. Mrs. Niles will be here any minute of the place you want to arrest. But don't worry. I hired a lawyer to defend you. I got my own personal mouthpiece. You mean your wife? No, no. <laughs> when I say mouthpiece, I mean someone who argues, shoots off his mouth, and lays down the law. That's still your wife. <laughs> There's the man who took my dog, that little fat one. This is Oliver Storchies of the Animal Aid Society. Mr. Storchies, arrest that man. Very well, Mr. Costello, you're under arrest. What's that? Come with me. I won't. Oh, darn it, nobody ever wants to come along. <laughs> now, leave us face it. You either come with me or pay the usual fine of one dollar. Oh, just a dollar. Did you hear that, Abbott? I can get out of the whole thing for a dollar. Here you are, Mr. Storchies. I'd be glad to get a... Just a minute, Costello. Paying that money would be an admission of your guilt. Shut up, Abbott. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. I hired a lawyer for you, after all. I can get out of this for a dollar. Just Abbott. a minute. I've hired your lawyer. He's an outstanding member of the bar, a learned counselor, and an expert at jurisprudence. His very voice has been known to spellbind in a jury. I can hear him now say... How do you do? <laughs> Costello? This is your attorney, Bert Gordon, the mad Russian. Gentlemen, my card. Let me read that. Bert Gordon, attorney at law, DBTC. What does a DBTC mean? Don't bend the card. <laughs> Listen, Costello. The Russian's going to give you some advice. Now, that is correct. Mr. Castoria, there are... <laughs> there are two courses in giving legal advice. Of course, and because. Of course, you don't have to take my advice, and because if you do, you'll have to pay for it. Hey, yeah, but this guy ain't no lawyer. Don't say that. Duh, don't say. When I went to college, they gave me a five better kappa key. Does it fit the hole in your head? Please, Costello. He's no college man. Mine, dear you. I'll have you understand, I went to Vassar. That's a, that's a school for girls, a girls' school. Uh, I found that out uh, one day when I was to, uh, to, to, uh, supporting the laundry. <laughs> now, see here, Mr. Costello. Get me another lawyer! A cheaper one. Mr. Costello, I'm waiting. Are you going to pay the fine of one dollar or not? Okay, here's your dollar store chief. Just a minute, Mr. Gensmello. <laughs> I forbid you to pay that particular dollar. Well, he's very fortunate to get off with just a dollar after the way he insulted me. 
wife when he choked my little dog a tear ran down my cheek. Yes, ma'am, but it took one look at your face and ran right back up again. <laughs> Costello, why don't you listen to the Russian? Yes, why not? You see, from the legal point of view, if you, if you should pay this dollar, it would be absolutely perpendicular. Perpendicular? What does that mean? How dare you! <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Come, Mr. Storchies, we're taking this case to court. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mrs. Niles. I'm going to pay the dollar. It's too late. Ha, 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 ha. look what you did, Abbott. You and your phony lawyer. Don't be silly. The Russian's one of the greatest lawyers in the world. That is correct. In my first case, I defended Dreyfus. Dreyfus? Alfred Dreyfus of Devil's Island? No, reckless Dreyfus from Coney Island. <laughs> Say, uh, Mr. Castile. <laughs> don't, uh, don't worry about the thing when I'm here. I'm a great intellectual. My stock and trade is brains. You got a funny-looking sample case. <laughs> now stop those remarks, Costello. Get a load of his ears. What's wrong with them? Looks like the wind is blowing from his back. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny? Yes. Yeah. You think it's funny? Yes. Yeah. Didn't I see you flying over Pomona? No, it was Glendale. <laughs> what oh, happened? what happened? Shouldn't happen to our dog. Huh? <laughs> Logan, will you please take this dollar, Russian, go down to the court and settle the case? Over my dead body, remember the words of that old saying, haste makes. Go ahead. There's more. <laughs> Well, come on, Costello. Let's go down to the court and fight this case. We'll win in no time. Court of Common Pleas now in session. Case of Niles versus Costello. Mr. Gordon may question the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Cantello... Uh, hmm. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I object! <laughs> You object! I didn't say nothing yet! <laughs> Costello, shut up! You keep out of this! Abbott, get me out of here! Will you, will you pay the dollar? Your Honor, you have heard the testimony. How can you call my client guilty? But I didn't call him guilty. Then why are you wasting my time? <laughs> the court finds the defendant, Lou Costello, guilty, and the fine is one dollar or thirty days. We won't pay the fine, Costello. No, we'll appeal the case to a higher court. I got plenty of time. You just got some for me, too. Abbott, will you please give the man a dollar? Please give him a dollar. The Supreme Court's now in session. First case, Niles versus Costello. The prisoner will step to the bar. <laughs> Costello. Are the chains heavy? No. But would you mind holding this hundred-pound ball? <laughs> Abbott, get me out of this. Please pay that one measly dollar. Order in the court. Remember, I am justice. And I'm justice, too. Justice who? Just as good as you are. <laughs> you can't speak that way to me, young man. I've been sitting on this bench for 20 years. Oh, just naturally lazy, eh? Wait! Wait! Let me handle this case. Mr. Cantaloupe! <laughs> Please tell the judge and jury the story of your life. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen... That's enough. <laughs> what a short life! Your Honor, my client would never hurt a dog. Mr. Corniello... <laughs> Tell the judge about your own little dog. Okay. I once had a little dog. Did he have long, wavy hair? Uh-huh. And did he have a cold nose? Uh-huh. And did he have very big ears? Oh, yes. Butter! That is... Your Honor, I would like to ask my client just one question. Request granted. Thank you. Mr. Castellanos. 
Tell me something. Where were you on the night of December 23rd, 1943? I was home. You should have been with me. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> the defense rests. Alcatraz, here I come. The court has considered the new evidence in this case. Prisoner Costello, when you placed your foot in the dog's mouth, you gave him hydrophobia. After which he bit two people who died immediately. Therefore, Lou Costello, you are found guilty of murder in the second degree, and it is the sentence of this court that you shall spend the rest of your natural life on the rock pile. Abbott, please pay the dollar! Right this way, gentlemen. Only five minutes with a prisoner. Costello, Please. listen. We've got some news for you. Absolutely. I just came from the Capitol. I saw the governor. What did he say? Pay the dollar. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh, now, now, don't get excited, Costello. M- Mrs. Lyles, what are you doing here? Well, Mrs. Storchies and I went to the governor, paid the dollar, and now everything's all straightened out. Costello, you're a free man. Gee, the only friend I got... Thanks, Mrs. Lyles. Yes, Costello, we're sorry it all happened. So as a surprise, we brought a friend of yours to see you. Say hello to Mr. Costello, Rover. Rover? <laughs> Emma, Costello! Emma! Costello, you... He bit me again! Costello, you... He bit me! Costello, <laughs> you've got your foot in the dog's mouth. You're choking, Rover, again! Costello, you're under arrest. That'll cost you a dollar. Don't pay the fine. We'll take it to the highest court. Here we go again! Let me out of here! Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week, tonight we salute First Lieutenant Thomas H. Regan of Chicago, an ordnance officer at an American air base in England. When the flying fortress exploded above his field, it scattered 16 live bombs over the countryside. When each was located, Lieutenant Regan went from one to the other, and though each might have blown him to bits, he removed the fuse from all 16 bombs, rendering them all harmless. In your honor, Lieutenant Thomas H. Regan, the makers of camels are sending to our soldiers overseas 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Judy Canova. And now here's Abbott and Costello with a final word. Uh, thanks, Ken. We're a little late. So I'll just say good night and a happy new year to you all. <laughs> great Abbott and Costello show next week at this same time when our guest will be Judy Canova. And remember, if you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get Camels. More flavor helps Camels hold up pack after pack. And now this is Ken Niles wishing you all a very pleasant holiday from Hollywood. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole world. Prince Albert's no bite treated for cool, tongue-happy smoking comfort. Crimp cut, too, to pack and burn and draw just right. More pipes smoke Prince Albert. It's the National Joy Smoke. This is the National Broadcasting Company.